comes to setting up a Spectra SP85 and SP60 base and rover for operation, there is a correct process for completing this. In this video, we will break down how this is done correctly. First up, when you open your box to your SP85, you will find a variety of components inside, such as an external power supply, a cable, battery for the receiver, the antenna and the extension pole and tri brack and adapter. First off, you need to fix the antenna to the base of the receiver and attach the protective pole. Next, you will fix the receiver to the tri brack and adapter and proceed to fix this to the tripod. To ensure you are setting up over your benchmark, you would then use the optical plumber on the tri brack to ensure you are correctly over the point. You then need to mount the external power supply to the clips on the tripod and attach the power supply cable to the only inlet on the bottom of the SP85 receiver. You then attach the other end of the cable to the external power supply. To power on the unit, you hold down the red power button until you see the spectra symbol appear on the screen. This then concludes the setup of the base. Next up is the setup of the SP60 Rover. Just like the SP85, you need to connect the antenna and extension pole to the base of the receiver. You will then need to put the battery inside the unit and then hold down the red power button until the light comes on. You then proceed to fix your receiver to your 2 meter high GPS pole and you are done with the basic setup for the receiver. Finally, the last basic setup is the data collector. First, attach the turned off data collector to the pole holder. This allows you to attach your data collector easily and safely to your GPS receiver pole for easy use in the field. Now that you have your Basin Rover set up and all mounted correctly, we are going to connect the Field Genius software for use in the field. Firstly, turn your tablet on by holding down the power button for a few seconds until the light turns on on the tablet. Now click on the Field Genius application and that will open the survey software. Once the software opens, you want to start a new project and click the New Project button and then proceed to name the project whatever it is you're planning to name this project. For this demo, we named our project Hydro. The next setup from here is to click Project Settings. This is an important step as you will need to set the zone you are working in. In Australia, you will find yourself using GDA 54, 55 or 56, so we recommend adding all three of these in whilst you're in this screen. Once this has been done, check all your settings are correct and click OK. Once you get to the next screen, you will need to click the instrument selection screen and connect to the GNSS reference, which is the base station that we had set up earlier. 
From the drop down menu, select the SP85 and click connect. This will initiate a Bluetooth connection between the tablet, software and the SP85 base. Click continue to move forward. Once you are on the working screen, it will ask you for a known position. As we don't have a known position, you will need to click on the known position button and change it to average geodetic position. If you are working with a known position, you would click the local transformation point and enter the coordinates here. For this instance, we will use average position. What this will do is take multiple readings of its current position and give you the average position of them all. You then click start reference. You need to leave this for at least a minute to let the reading stabilize. You then press the set position once you are happy with the position. The next screen will say, do you want to save this geodetic position? What this is referring to is saving this position for future use. So if you are planning on returning to this site in the future or using this point for multiple days, then click yes. If not, and it's just a once off benchmark, then click no. For us, we click no. The next screen will ask you for further information about the base. You will need to change the height of the instrument from 1.7 meters to the exact height of your base. This is done by measuring the height of your base, which is set on your tripod. On the back of the receiver, there is a measurement mark you should start your measurement from, and then go to the floor. In this instance, the height was 1.27 meters high. You then click OK to save these settings. Next up is the link configure screen. All you do on this screen is click connect. After this setup is complete, you have now successfully set up the base and it is now time to start transmitting. Once this has all been completed, we need to set up the receiver. To start this, you do not click the stop reference button, but instead click the plum bob down the bottom left of your screen. Once there, you click disconnect. This disconnects you from the base, but keeps it transmitting. Now we click connect and click GNSS receiver option and the SP60 from the drop down menu and click connect. Once this has been completed, you should see the RTK fixed option in the bottom right hand side of the screen. What this means is the base is transmitting correctly to the rover and the rover has picked up the base's correction signal and a fixed solution. By clicking the drop down menu in the top left hand side of the screen, you can see the tolerances you are getting from your base. If you are amongst trees and buildings like we are, you will receive a reduced reception and should receive a similar tolerance to ours. But if you are in an open space, your tolerances will be much tighter. On the right you can see how many satellites you are currently connected to and your PDOP and your antenna height. The antenna height needs to be changed to 2 meters as that is the height of the GPS pole we are using. This is done by clicking on the, new, on the antenna height and putting in the correct height and clicking OK. From here you are ready to start recording points. You will need to name your points by clicking the no description button down the bottom and changing the name to whatever you wish your points to be called. If you wish to string multiple points together, you leave the string button selected or deselected if you wish to take individual points. You then click the RTK fix button to store the point. It will then take three shots for your average position. You then click the store point and it will come up with the option to change some information. Just click the store point button if you are happy with all of this info or change the name of the point if you wish to put down an individual point name. Should you wish to review your points you have saved, you can click the points database option down the bottom left hand side of the screen. This will bring up all your stored points. By completing all of these tasks correctly, you are now ready to start taking your first points on site. Now that your day has been completed and you wish to shut down all of your devices, we are going to go through the process of shutting down the tablet, the receiver and the base. To shut down the tablet and the software, you need to click the plum bob down the bottom left hand side and click disconnect from rover. You can then click the plum bob again and click the exit button and yes to exit Phil Genius. Once this has been completed, shutting down your tablet is just like shutting down any computer. You click the windows key and then click shut down to shut down the tablet. Don't forget that overnight charge should be completed 
Otherwise, when it comes to your working in the next day, your tablet will be flat. To do this, you connect the charger to a power point and to the bottom of the tablet underneath. The SP60 and SP85 Basin Rover both have the same shutdown sequence. It is done by holding down the off button for a long sequence until you hear the tone. Once you hear it, release and your receiver and then base are turned off. And that concludes the setup and shutdown of a Basin Rover on site. If this video has been of any help at all, please let us know in the comments below and leave a like and a subscribe. Keep an eye out for future GNSS videos coming soon and we look forward to talking to you soon.